Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. The last four days have been very hot in Boston, Massachusetts. And the Boston Globe newspaper took advantage of the hot weather to spread some climate alarmism. It's hot out. Is this climate change? It's been getting consistently warmer, and invariably that means what was a warm day 20 years ago is going to be a lot warmer today. In Boston now, there are now twice as many nights when temperatures don't drop below 70 degrees. Across the region, 90 degree days are occurring earlier and more often. The historical average has nearly doubled. What does this say about climate change? From 1971 to 2000, Massachusetts logged an average of four days above 90 degrees. By the middle of the century, that number could be between 10 and 28 days. By the end of the century, experts say that could be between 13 and 56 days. Before we look at the actual data, let's look at a few of the tricks which the Boston Globe is using to misinform their readers. Boston is a very old city, one of the oldest in the United States, and plays a key role in U.S. history. So why did they start their data in 1971? I did my geology field camp at Boston University during the 1970s, and I'm pretty sure the city was quite a bit older than that. Then in the next paragraph they say, that number could be between 10 and 28 days. All kinds of things could happen in the future. Monkeys could fly out of Al Gore's rear. But the fact that something could happen doesn't mean there's any likelihood that it will happen. In the third sentence, they use the meaningless could be phrase again, and they also say, experts say. When the press uses the term experts say, it normally means they just made the whole thing up. The term experts say is designed to get their readers to turn their brains off and accept complete nonsense. Now let's look at the actual data for the number of 90 degree days in New England. The Boston Globe started their trend in 1971, which was right at the low point. The hottest year was 1949, when almost 4% of days were above 90 degrees Fahrenheit, or 32 degrees Celsius. So by hiding all of this inconvenient data before 1971, they're able to make it look like there's an upwards trend. There were more 90 degree days in the past, and if we look at 95 degree days, we can see that the past heat is even more pronounced. New England used to be much hotter, with the 1940s being the hottest decade. Let's read this Boston Globe claim again. Across the region, 90 degree days are occurring earlier and more often. We've already seen that their claim that 90 degree days are occurring more often is incorrect. Now let's look at their claim that they're occurring earlier. This graph shows the average first day above 90 degrees Fahrenheit for the New England states. The y-axis shows the day of the year when the first 90 degree day occurred on average. You can see that between 1950 and 2005, the first day of year above 90 degrees Fahrenheit was trending earlier. But over the past 15 years, the first 90 degree day has been trending later, and it's now not much different than it was in 1960. So both of these claims are false. Now let's look at their claim that in Boston there's now twice as many nights when temperatures don't drop below 70 degrees. This graph shows the percent of nights below 70 degrees Fahrenheit across New England. A century ago, New England stations would average about one night per year which didn't drop below 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And now that number is two or three nights a year. So the claim is correct, but it's highly misleading. New England does have more warm nights than it did a century ago but this is largely due to urbanization and the fact that the climate has gotten wetter. A century ago, nobody had air conditioning, but now almost everyone does, and they can probably handle two or three nights a year when it doesn't drop below 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's look at what the Boston Globe had to say 110 years ago. May 23, 1911. It was 104 degrees in New Hampshire and 103 degrees in Maine. These were extremely hot temperatures, much hotter than anything New England has experienced recently, and they were occurring very early during May. The Sydney Morning Herald reported on May 22, 1911, the terrific heat wave that is sweeping over the United States has been responsible for hundreds of deaths, and this was during May. And then a few weeks later, July 4, 1911 was the hottest July 4 on record in the United States. All of the pink dots on this map show locations that were over 100 degrees Fahrenheit on July 4th, 1911. The Boston Globe reported that it was 106 degrees at Boston, 
the highest temperature ever recorded there. According to the Boston Globe, there were 100 degree temperatures all over New England and New Hampshire reached 110 degrees. Temperatures this hot are incomprehensible now and the heat was killing lots and lots of people. According to the New England Historical Society, the July 1911 heat wave killed thousands of people in New England and sent many over the brink of madness. During 11 hellish days, horses dropped in the streets and babies didn't wake up from their naps. In every major northeastern city, the sweltering heat drove people to suicide. This article says the temperature in Boston was 104 degrees, which was a record, but the Boston Globe reported 2 degrees hotter at 106. Temperatures were much hotter 110 years ago, and people didn't have air conditioning like they do now. The 1911 heat wave also occurred in Europe. A 70-day heat wave in Paris killed more than 40,000 people. Across the United States, the frequency of 90-degree days has dropped sharply over the last 90 years. The last year with a lot of 90-degree days was 1988, when carbon dioxide was still below 350 parts per million. 1988 was also the year when NASA's James Hansen started the global warming scare before Congress. He said that the number of days over 90 degrees at Washington, D.C. would more than double. He said that sea level would rise anywhere from 1 to 6 feet. In 1995, the New York Times said, Experts say most of the beaches on the east coast of the United States will be gone by the year 2020. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, anytime a newspaper uses the term experts say, it normally means they're just making things up. All of the beaches on the east coast of the United States that I've been to are still there, and they look pretty much the same as they did when I was a child. Now let's look at Hansen's claim from 1988 that the number of 90 degree days at Washington, D.C. will double. This is the number of 90 degree days at Purcellville, Virginia, which is the closest United States Historical Climatology Network station in Virginia to Washington, D.C. 90 degree days at Purcellville peaked in 1930 and they've been declining ever since, and 1988 was one of the last hot years. Dr. Hansen didn't know what he was talking about in 1988, and the Boston Globe doesn't know what they're talking about in the year 2021. The Boston Globe is trying to demonize fossil fuels and air conditioning. But it was the lack of air conditioning 110 years ago that killed thousands of New Englanders. The Boston Globe wants people to believe that the use of fossil fuels is going to burn them up, when in fact it's the availability of fossil fuels which makes their lives comfortable. George Orwell said, So much of left-wing thought is a kind of plane with fire by people who don't even know that fire is hot. Boston Globe writers work in a nice air-conditioned office and they have no clue how dangerous their rhetoric is. When their electricity goes off and they can't turn the air conditioner on, they're going to realize how ridiculous their belief system is. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on this madness for the past 13 years. You can visit him and Kyrie on the web at realclimatescience.com.